வணக்கம் வெல்கம் டு திஸ் கோர்ஸ் செக்மெண்ட் அண்ட் பயோமெடிக்கல் இம்ப்ளிமெண்டேஷன் வி வர் டிஸ்கசிங் அபவுட் ஸ்மார்ட் சென்சர்ஸ் அண்ட் வாட் ஆர் சம் ஆஃப் த அட்வான்டேஜஸ் ஆஃப் ஹேவிங் அ ஸ்மார்ட் சென்சர் so now we'll continue the discussion the idea is to have a system or a device that could preferably make measurements in a non invasive or if possible in a non contact manner so these are some ideal for example pressure sensor that uh, takes advantage of the piezo resistive effect kindly check that this is different from piezo electric effect this is piezo resistivity the means if the pressure is changing it is not the resistance that changes so the pressure is changing if the resistance changes that's called as piezo electric effect the if the pressure changes if the resistivity changes the resistivity for example of a material say copper is some constant can the resistivity of this material change the answer is no but resistivity can change in semiconductor devices so these are silicon pressure sensors that take advantage of the semiconductor properties so that the resistivity changes when the resistivity so this is an advantage of the piezo resistive effect and uh, then there are electrodes that we can use these are called as biopotential these are electrodes that are used to measure the electrical activity from the surface of the human body usually from the surface of the human body in and in some cases from deep inside the human body also either way we are interested in making measurements from the human body that have origin from within the human body so these are sensors that are specifically designed to detect and identify the bioelectricity small electrical signals that originate from physiological activity for example what what are the sources of this uh, biopotential well there are these there are these cells called as excitable cells these are the muscle cells and the neurons these cells maintain a constant potential across their cell membrane and they conduct electricity they conduct electricity electricity in the sense that they conduct electricity through ionic means is that not so this ionic current essentially constitutes or this flow of ions leads to what is called as a action potential and uh, these action potential trains that travel across for example these excitable cells cause this bioelectricity and this bioelectricity can be measured from these electrodes that are placed either on the surface of the body or sometimes inserted into the body some of these examples that use this technology or electrocardiogram that measures the electrical activity of the heart and electroencephalogram that measures the electrical activity of the brain it turns out that the ecg for example is a very successful device that for example is available in even in primary care settings there are other forms of this electro x grams that is uh, electro oculogram electro myogram and several electro gastrogram there are electro neurogram there are so many forms of these uh, grams that are available these are a couple of examples for example it is possible to make deep inferences about the functioning of the heart by just placing electrodes on the surface of the body now that is a an excellent non invasive way to deduce information critical 
high quality information about a critical internal organ. These are the kind of devices, these are the kind of systems that we are interested in learning in this course in biomedical instrumentation. Course. Also, there is a need for us to use specific amplifiers for specific electrodes because the characteristics of these electrodes essentially dictate what kind of an amplifier or analog front end or an input stage of an amplifier that I can use. Ideally, we are interested in having a, of course, we are interested in having high input impedance and low noise. But why? That is the question. Why this? Why high input impedance? What is the reason? Because otherwise what will happen is there will be loading of the signal flows. How do I know this? Well, if you know some basic electrical engineering, if you know Kirchhoff's law, then you know that there is flow of current through resistances that are lower in value. So if you have high input impedance for the amplifier, then the amplifier itself will not act as a load to the electrode. This is absolutely critical. This is a critical characteristic of an amplifier. Of course, I'm interested in a high gain. Of course, I'm interested in a low noise. Why low noise? What is noise? Any, anything that is not the signal is noise. For example, I am interested in measuring the electrical activity of the brain and uh, the head is moving or there are some movements that are happening near the electrodes that are placed on the head. These are also physiological movements. For example, eye blink is happening. That is also a physiological movement. This is also a physiological phenomenon. But I am not interested in measuring that. I am interested in measuring the brain activity. So from the viewpoint of the measurement of the brain electrical activity, the eye blink essentially constitutes noise. But if I'm interested in measuring eye blinks, then that is not noise, that is signal. So this is a critical aspect to remember. Sometimes it is necessary for us to make measurements from multiple systems simultaneously. For example, in an ICU, you're interested in making measurements simultaneously from multiple sources. Now, also, sometimes we are interested in converting data from acoustic to electrical. An example is the stethoscope. Of course, there are these digital stethoscopes. But the regular stethoscope essentially transmits heart or lung sounds directly as an acoustic vibration. But then if I use a digital or an electrical stethoscope, it essentially listens using a microscope. And then in the physician's uh, ears, there is a small speaker. For example, nowadays, all the students you see, they are having these earbuds, wireless earbuds, or uh, wireless uh, headphones. Like that, what, what, what do these uh, uh, devices have? Those that you use to listen to music. What, are, what do these devices have? These are really small speakers, is it not? Likewise, the physician's digital stethoscope will have a small speaker. What is the difference? The difference is that the microphone essentially converts the acoustic signal into an electrical signal. And then it is digitally processed or processed using analog technology, depending on the type of uh, uh, stethoscope. If it's a regular electrical stethoscope, it might use analog processing or it if it's a digital stethoscope, it might use digital processing. That is, it converts that analog electrical signal into digital signal and then processes that in the digital domain and then delivers it to a speaker. What is the advantage? The advantage is that in this case, I can process it with a high degree of accuracy. I can have high signal to noise ratio. This The, the, the idea is that this microphone 
should convert this acoustic signal in a reliable manner. It should not add, for example, because this is a microphone, as I'm speaking, you may be able to hear the fan whirring in my room. That is an, when I am speaking, and if you are interested in listening to me speak, the fan whirring is nice, but for me, I need the fan. So I'm having the fan. But suppose you're not interested in listening to me, listening to this lecture, and you're watching something else on YouTube simultaneously, then what I am speaking is nice. It depends on how you look at it. So for the microphone, it only has the characteristic of picking up signals of acoustic origin. And it will pick up all acoustic signals, not just heart and lung sounds. It will pick up essentially all sounds. If the person is speaking as they are having the stethoscope, then the microphone will also pick up the speech. And because the signal frequency and the noise frequencies will have overlap, it, it will get amplified. So the physician will hear the person speak also. So this is something that we need to remember that the concept of signal and noise depends on how you look at it. And so these, uh, these microphones essentially converts sound vibrations into electrical signals. And then these electrical signals are amplified. And this amplification essentially improves the characteristic that if, if the signal is very low in intensity, it can be perceived by the human, in this case, by the human ear. But there are also devices that improve that provide amplification for some other sensor senses also. So I, in this case, you can amplify sounds that are too high in frequency that is not possible to be perceived by the human ear. So these are possible with the signal processing systems. With this, we will end this segment. We'll continue in the next segment.